Hello everyone. A while back, as a special episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, I reviewed a book called Playing With Power NES Classic. It was a book by Brady Games, published as a companion to the NES uh, Mini, NES Classic Mini. A small, well, obviously, you know what it is, it's a small device with a whole bunch of NES games loaded on it. And the book covered every single one of the games that were covered, that were con contained in that uh, system. And it was a very well done book, and now it's time for me to talk about a different book. Not the companion volume for the Super Nintendo Classic, though such a book certainly does exist, but something different. This is Final Fantasy Ultimania Archive, a book which came out in 2018 by Dark Horse Books. Um, they're the company, just doing various comic books like Hellboy and various manga like Berserk and Helsing, they also put out the various Legend of Zelda books, Hyrule Historia, various art book collections, and that sort of thing. So, this book is a collection of, of translated information from a book series known as the Ultimania series. If you're a big Final Fantasy fan, you may be familiar with that name. It, Ultimania is a series of books that came out in Japan containing loads of concept art and um, screenshots and annotated notes and design documents from the Final Fantasy game with more information on the game's world that maybe didn't make it at the game, and items and spells that didn't make it in, um, sprite art sheets, all sorts of fun stuff like that. However, they've all been in, only in Japanese. Certainly there have been scans out there, but they haven't been translated scans. There have been translations of the text that have been put on websites, but these translations haven't been in the context of the art. So if you want both, if you want to kind of enjoy these Ultimania books in the way they're originally intended, to a degree, you haven't been able to have the option unless you read Japanese. Ultimania Archive basically provides that option in English. And this book in particular as you can tell from the cover, covers the first six Final Fantasy games, which is why this falls under the category of Nintendo Power Retrospectives instead of breaking it all down, because all six of these games were released first on Nintendo systems and got re-releases on Nintendo systems as well, the Game Boy Advance releases of Final Fantasy 1 through 6. And also, of course, Final Fantasy 1, 4, and 6 were released in the United States as Final Fantasy 1 on the NES, and then 2 and 3 on the Super Nintendo. So, this book, I pre-ordered it, because I wasn't sure how big the print run was going to be, and I was like, 40 bucks? Um, and what are you getting out of this? For starters, you're getting, as you can tell from me holding it up in front of the camera, a solid hardcover book. Um, it's got really good glossy pages and art. You have concept art from Yoshitaka Amano for every character from these games. Monsters, um, protagonists, you name it. For the monster art, usually we have a sprite version of the character next to them. Um, for the games where you have class changes, or rather job changes like Final Fantasy 2 and 5, you have, in addition to like the original concept art by Amano of the character, you then have, okay, here's little concept art doodles of how the sprite will vary depending on how you change the class. Um, Red Mage, Black Mage, Fighter, Lan uh, Dragoon, all that fun stuff. All that's in there. Um, in Monsters, you have the concept, you have the... Uh, Amano's art right next to the monster art, the monster sprite art, so you can see how the character was adjusted or not adjusted. They got it one to one with the final release. You get um, maps, and I don't just mean like oh um, world maps, but like the concepts of the world map have developed over time. Like you have the prototype world map for um, Final Fantasy III, 
both the upper and lower world, surface world and the floating continent, which is a big deal if you've played three, and because that is probably the largest world of a Final Fantasy game to date. You get notes on music files, um, and early ideas for the job list and what the how the characters' concepts would work. You even have notes like, okay, um, this is where the background art is going to change, or the, the terrain sprites for this dungeon are going to change, or a list of music tracks for various games and that sort of thing. It is, it is an extraordinary, extraordinary game. An uh, extraordinary book and a uh, book that covers a series of extraordinary games and world maps, design documents. It's it is really impressive. Um, again, complete sprite art of everybody, all facings and everything like that. So, like for example, this makes things interesting with stuff like Final Fantasy One, where with Final Fantasy One, the way the sprite art was set up is like they only did the movement sprite art for they only did six versions of the sprite uh one for facing up and facing down with the sprite design so that it could be mirrored vertically in order to give the illusion of movement and then two versions of that wasn't six was that i'm sorry it was uh uh four uh, two ver then two variants for a right-facing sprite, with again to, be, uh, to give the illusion of movement, and with those sprites being able to be mirrored if you're facing left, that sort of thing. It has notes and music files. One game has as one of the possible music file uh, has a, as a music file on there. I didn't know this was on music file in the game. One of the programmers basically trying to use the music chips. Um, music hardware of the game system and attempt to play fear ease with all of their little fumbles and mess ups along the way, which is really neat, especially considering both limit, both hey we have only so much space on this chip on on, on the uh, cartridge, but also in terms of they put this on there. That's not this something necessarily you would know because not all these games had a sound test mode or anything like that. So, this is an extraordinary book. Um, and for, for, again, an extraordinary game series. It's one which, while it is not, while Final Fantasy is not as big in Japan as Dragon Quest is, <clears throat> there's still nothing to sneeze at. And it's certainly very large. In, it's still big in Japan. It's not, it's, not, it, it's the equivalent of, um, James Bond versus Mission Impossible in terms of, I guess, size of franchises. But it's certainly nothing just needs that. It's certainly a very, as a book goes, this is incredibly comprehensive. If I had to complain about it, um, if I had to say anything negative, it's a little light on the music front. I mean, obviously it's a book and you can't do music with it. But there's little things like information on Final Fantasy VI on the opera scene, which is probably considered one of the most beloved sequences of the game. It's one of the parts that everyone talks about. Even though it's a relatively light interlude in the middle of the game, it's, it's still kind of nuts. And both in terms of what they did with the sound chips to get it to while to while not having human voice, giving a good approximation of human voice. And also in terms of what is actually a fairly involved choreography of sprites for that sequence. It's really impressively done. I love to see concept art of that sequence, um, design docs talking about how they put it together, maybe even, like, I'd like to see what um, Nobuo Uematsu's, like, notes for designing the music and the sound effects look like. That's something I would be really fascinated to see. Again, because for some of these earlier games, again, Nubo Oematsu, 
he isn't just a composer, he's a sound designer. He designs everything from sword from the sword slash sound effects and that sort of thing. And he also has to juggle with the sound hardware, having the sound having the sound effects and the music going at the same time, which is kind which if you played a lot of NES games, is actually kind of tricky, because sometimes your sound effect is going to be taking one of the other voices on or one of the audio channels on the Nintendo sound hardware. I'd love to see some discussion of this from the sound side, sound hardware side of things. Both as a person who enjoys retro video game music, and also in the context of being someone who's like, hey, I like to see how people find interesting ways to resolve these sort of programming problems. It's one of the reasons why Chasing the Beam is on my reading list, and I've just never really gotten around to it, mainly because I mean, I'm not that much in the Atari 2600 from a hardware standpoint. So, anyway. Final Fantasy Ultimania Archive gets an absolute full-hearted full-hearted and full-throated recommendation. This is definitely worth, worth picking up. Especially if you're a fan of this era of Final Fantasy game. So, if you enjoyed this book, or are interested in this book and want to pick it up, links below um, to where you can get it from Amazon as a referral link. Again, check it out. I recommend getting it. And buying the book through those links will help support the site. Next time, we will return to our regularly scheduled uh, Nintendo Power Retrospectives. And this next issue we'll be covering is going to have a whole lot of fighting game coverage. So, if you like fighting games, and if you like SNK, you've got that to look forward to. Catch you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.